Um, you know, I had prepared a couple of pages as my notes, but well, they are like just a piece of paper now. <laughs> so, so I'll have to, you know, uh, rejig my thoughts in terms of how uh, we want to look at it. So much of what I wanted to say uh, in terms of technology and in terms of the usage and how industry should look at sustainability has been very well covered by you. So I'll, I'll look at a different perspective now that uh, we are talking about it. So when we talk about our, uh, you know, at the as a uh, policy think tank, uh, Niti Aayog, uh, you know, the large part of our discourse is about how to make India developed. How do we address the challenges of Vikasat Bharat at 2047, and how to address the vision of net zero at 2070? And when we talk about this industry and also the water usage with which it has, and and the product which it makes, which is so essential for everyday uh, life of a poorest person to a richest person, everybody is using paper. So if it is an industry which nobody can ignore. It is an industry uh, which uh, has to function and which has a strong possibility of becoming a most, uh, most sustainable industry possible as compared to plastics as you, as you said earlier. So when we talk about all these things, what are the challenges which we feel right now are there? In terms of uh, one of the challenges which was mentioned by Mr. Pawan Agarwal was about the availability of the raw material. I am an IFS officer, forest service officer from Uttarakhand and one of my first exposure to paper and pulp industry was in Lal Kuwa, where the century paper mill is situated. So I was a young officer then and I had a tour of the, uh, the premises and you know I saw the manufacturing process and also the challenges and, and one of the important challenges was the wastewater management which would flow out into the forest and one of the rivers nearby. Uh, so when you enter Lal Kuwa, I don't know what is the situation now, but when you would, and when the train would enter Lal Kuwa, you could uh, feel the uh, the smell in the air about uh, all the chemicals which are coming out uh, from the industry. I am sure that it must be better now. But the point I'm trying to make is that uh, there are effluents, there are discharges, and there is a water which needs to be treated in an effective way to be useful again. And if you don't do that, then there is a lot of downstream effects to the farmers, to the animals, to the uh, livestock which is there and and when we try to do that there is a lot of technology which has been uh, which is available right now um, uh, mr pawan khetan mentioned about uh, mbr and mbbr the different kind of technologies there are uh, very advanced technologies now to uh, uh, clear up the water in terms of uh, extracting uh, all the residual chemicals from that water uh, the point is that are we trying to uh, keep the cost down uh, while we are not counting the externalities uh, of the environment uh, in terms of uh, paper industry? Uh, that, that is a question we need to answer in terms of uh, what is the cost of clean water uh, going uh, now and uh, maybe in 10 years down the line and 20 years down the line when the, all the cities will become very, very water stressed. So the point I'm trying to make is that uh, it's, uh, the, uh, the concept of uh, zero uh, discharge is, is an important concept and uh, as an industry if we are able to focus on that uh, and we are able to create technologies which are economical as well as sustainable that's going to be a very important step. Secondly, uh, in that area, Tarai area, a lot of farmers grow popular and uh, eucalyptus which becomes a, uh, which is a raw material for paper industry and what I've seen is that the pricing of that raw material is very cyclic. At certain years, the price goes up very high and then there is a big harvest and the price becomes very low. And when we are talking about the economy of the country and where farmers play a very important role and uh, doubling of the income of farmers is a very important uh, goal of the government, I think we need to uh, make sure that uh, uh, the incomes of the people who produce the raw materials, which are quite poor in, uh, in terms of uh, the part of the uh, GDP they refer to. So uh, how do we uh, procure raw materials from those farmers while we are also able to uh, sustain the industry which is already dealing with a raw material crisis. So that's, that's important, one of the important points which I uh, want to mention. Uh, about the packaging, I think there is one more important point. Uh, one of the industries I visited and I was told that uh, uh, you know, it's uh, I won't name the industry, but uh, they they kind of you know make small products in sachets, and they, I was told that about 13 billion packets of sachets have been produced from that uh, unit in last five years. 
and I can just uh, imagine the kind of plastic which has been strewn around all over the place because of those. I mean, those are those are smaller FMCG stuff, which which it's very difficult to collect and recycle. So, if we are able to produce technologies, as uh, Mr. Pawan uh, already said, uh, where we can actually produce packaging through uh, uh, instead of plastics, uh, we can use papers, which can. Uh, ensure that the food products and the FMCG products can reliably be uh, sold to the customers without any problems in terms of uh, leakages and all. I think that will be a very big step in terms of uh, sustainability of the uh, plant as such. Then um, in terms of wastelands, as, again as a forest officer we have been dealing with plantations and uh, you know all the <coughs> issues which come with it uh, in terms of providing raw, mat raw materials. Uh, looking at bamboo is a very important thing. Bamboo mission uh, kind of focuses on the raw material. I think in uh, Madhya Pradesh there is a large area which has been dedicated to producing raw materials for uh, for the industry itself. But not all wastelands are suitable for growing trees. And uh, while we can uh, imagine uh, uh, you know the total uh, area which is devoid of trees in the country, but not not all of it is suitable for plantations. But if you can uh, come up with species, I'm sure there are many companies which uh, do ITC Badra Salam as a, uh, you know, they've come out with many uh, uh, variations of uh, popular which are uh, suitable to different areas. Uh, if there is a uh, strong emphasis of R&D on developing species which can uh, actually grow in areas which have uh, severe water stress, I think that's going to solve a lot of uh, issues uh, of raw material as well as uh, ensure sustainability of the forest, uh, enhance the carbon sequestration which we are all looking for in terms of our carbon emissions and we also have an NDC goal in which we want to reduce 2.5 to uh, 3 billion of uh, you know, carbon dioxide sequestration we want to do that, that in India. So all those things would fall in place if you are able to uh, address the wasteland issue. Uh, however, I would also like to caution that uh, you know certain areas uh, do seem like wasteland, but they are uh, themselves an ecological uh, biospheres for certain species which can survive only in those kind of dry areas. So while we are doing that, we also need to be cognizant of the fact that uh, there are species like uh, Great Indian Buzzard which can only survive in a deserted landscape. I mean, if you can't grow trees everywhere as well. Then lastly, I would also like to emphasize on um, uh, the the technology which can help us in uh, reducing uh, water consumption. Uh, I know of certain uh, uh, you know, startups in Bangalore who have uh, come out with AI driven solutions, IoT driven solutions uh, in which uh, they are able to install sensors in each and every uh, part of the uh, industry where the water consumption is happening and with AI analytics uh, they are able to point out exactly what are the areas where the consumption can be reduced and uh, water efficiency can be increased. I'm sure that uh, paper and pulp industry would be using that uh, because it's a very water intensive uh, thing and water would definitely be a very important cost component of uh, the overall uh, uh, cost of paper making. So uh, so the solutions which, which can help us reduce the, uh, 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 the water usage and also the um, uh, also the contaminants in them while uh, the, uh, the effluents are being discharged, I think those will be very important uh, AI driven technologies which can be useful. And in terms of policy, uh, I would also like to say that uh, normally in India we have been looking at uh, managing the waste through EPR regime. Uh, many EPR regimes have come up uh, in terms of when we talk about circular economy in the country, water is also a part of it. and. Uh, uh, Aminash Mishra Sarai is here, he had uh, already published a, a report I think I have seen in the uh, schedule that it will be discussed today later on and uh, water, um, the so, so circular economy and water is an important part and there could be many other solutions like uh, um, the creation of wastewater market itself is one of the ways to deal with it and should we have EPRs for paper industry as well, is that something we should consider. Uh, suggestions like that would be very very welcome if you could uh, you know, uh, uh, tell us what the industry mode is on that. Like, uh, would it be effective to? Uh, would the EPRs be effective in increasing the collection uh, from 50 to maybe 70 or 80 and match the European standards and increase the availability for the uh, for the company manufacturing companies? So that could be one of the uh, areas we could discuss. So. Uh, so I would just uh, conclude with that um, message that uh, you know, sustainable water management, uh, as we had heard earlier, uh, is, a, is an important step uh, for the future of not only the paper and pulp industry, but for the country as a whole, all the sectors, important sectors, including agriculture, household, um, 
primary minerals. Everybody uses, uh, every industry uses water in a big way. And we know, uh, we know the uh, effects of climate change are becoming more and more severe. We are already going through a heat wave in Delhi and these things are going to ex uh, exacerbate a bit when we you know, move in a decade or so uh, further. So we have to address all these things and these can only be done if you, all the industry and all the consumers of that water uh, you know, behave in a uh, manner in which they, they are able to recognize the preciousness of the water and we use all the technologies available uh, at hand to reduce the consumption. I therefore again now would like to congratulate CII to uh, you know, organize this conference on this very important topic of uh, sustainability of water resources uh, on paper and pulp and uh, I'm sure that uh, these two days of deliberation will come, uh, will throw up many ideas and all of us would uh, learn quite a bit from this and would uh, be very interested in the final report which you are able to generate so that we can you know, use that in our uh, organization as well to uh, come up with some good policy initiatives. Thank you so much.